It's great to see you this evening. Would you turn? Well, I guess you're not going to turn with me, are you? I was going to ask you to turn in your hymnal. But would you stand with me? We're going to sing number 229, Wonderful Peace. that it's not just peace but it's wonderful peace we're thankful for all that you've done for us thankful for salvation we have in christ we're thankful for the word of god and now Lord, we're thankful for the opportunity to meet together and i pray you'll bless those who can't be with us tonight those who are recovering from accidents and surgeries and things that are going on in their life pray for those who are not with us tonight and are and will be viewing for as the services are recorded for them, that you bless them as well. Protect them, take care of them, I ask. Thank you now for your goodness now, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Good to see you tonight. Glad you're with us here in the service. And to those who will be watching later, uh, God bless you. We're glad that you're uh, with us tonight. Uh, several announcements we want to make to you uh, concerning... Of course, uh, the Lord's Day coming up, we'll have our regular services at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, 6 o'clock Sunday evening this coming week. And on the 21st, which is Father's Day, we have ordered, again, a gift for the fathers like we did for the mothers. It's not here yet. So it's supposed to be here. So please uh, understand that if it does not come, we're going to give you the rest of the Mother's Day ones. Okay, guys? Because we do have those. But uh, we have something ordered for you. And also on the 21st, we have a young lady who is going to be visiting with us, Tiffany Smallwood. Uh, Tiffany is coming to us from Pensacola Christian University where she just graduated. Uh, even though, you know, she did her work, she was doing her last uh, teacher practicums and all that kind of stuff. And uh, she comes uh, to us from Georgia, where her dad is a pastor. And she is soon in July to be married to uh, Zachary Melvin, who is Eric Melvin's son. He's stationed here in town. And then they will be here about two years. So we're looking at possibly her teaching for us uh, in the academy. Pray. You heard the stuff that came down this week about how schools will have to operate this coming year. Please understand, there are lots of things going on every day in this venue. Uh, how things are looked at uh, worldwide, how things are changing, it's amazing. They've got lockdowns still going on to some degrees. We've talked to Amanda in England, and the 
English people and their government and the uh, businesses in England are all in a, in a quagmire over what's being done and what's happening. Uh, we are, Lord willing, with everything, we're going to open school. It may be different. But I want you to understand, registering your, your, your children, we will have school in the fall. And uh, it may be different. We may have to spread out some. There may be some mask wearing and so forth. And yet, there are things were being found out all the time. I did, I did not hear personally. Marsh, you heard on the news tonight. There were spikes in 16 states today or something. And um, I don't know what all that means, except that God's still in control. So we're not being naive about this. We're going to make plans. We're going to talk about it. Mr. McGarry and I and staff will get together, talk about how this will work. But you're doing a great job in coming, wearing your mask. And when we are getting close together, you make sure that you wear the mask and we sit apart and we'll continue doing that. Don't fret as to what is being decided right now that could change tomorrow for September because we've got to work through it and there'll be lots of things that'll come down. Please understand. I do want you to know that there is a lot of, uh, there, there are a lot of issues going on between government and schools and churches and, and, and private institutions like our academy in the state of Virginia right now legally. And it's not a go to Northam church issue at this point, but there are, suits and countersuits and different things that are being that are being sought through the court system to try to come to some more definition of what our First Amendment rights are going to be for us. So please understand, that's why so much of this is up in the air. And so we've got to prepare, and we're going to do so. And yet, uh, don't be fretful. God willing, there will be school. It may be a little different at first. I'm assuming, I believe that we will eventually be able, through both immunity as well as vaccines and so forth, to take care of ourselves and meet regularly. But I want you to know something, Tabernacle. Don't, don't you dare live by fear. It's not worth it. It's not worth being feeling, feeling like that I've got to be afraid of everything. Now, I'm, I, now I'm going to let you know, I'm not going down the street and hugging everybody's neck right now. Okay? So we're being careful, but I do that. Uh, I'd be careful too during the uh, during the flu season, and I'm washing my hands, and I respect you, and I hope you do the same for us. And uh, so let's let's. I'm not going to live by fear. I I fear that fear is debilitating. Fear robs you of your joy. Fear creates worry. I'm going to be wise, but I'm not going to be dominated by fear, and I hope you'll do the same. And so each day as it comes down. I'll say, what will they have to say tomorrow? We'll see. But we will make plans accordingly and be able to open up. So you pass the word. Tabernacle Baptist Academy, Lord, Lord willing, will be open in, in late August to begin the new school year. And so uh, let's not be uh, fretful about those kinds of things and, and, and so forth. In fact, um, you know, our setup and the way we are and how we operate in our high school with A and B days may just be our cup of tea to not to have enough students in classes that we can do the distancing we need. And uh, who knows what God will do. Mr. Gary and I have not discussed it much. We've been doing other things this week. But uh, we will get after that and let you know what's going on. But on the 21st, please welcome Tiffany. She'll be here to play the, to play the piano for us and give her testimony and meet with Mr. McGarry and, and uh, some of the staff as we uh, get to know her a little bit. And she seems to be a very sweet gal. We'll see what God will do in all of that. Take your prayer. Or again, you don't have prayer sheets. It's just like you don't have handles. Okay. I have some prayer requests to mention to you. It's good to see Art tonight. He's here tonight. He's not leading. And uh, uh, he has a, 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 a pretty good road rash here from falling, but he's doing okay. And I've uh, been to the dentist and has to have some dental work done and that kind of thing. But the Lord was good to him. Uh, in the fall that he took and uh, was n knocked out or unconscious for a short while. And uh, two ladies saw it happen and called 911 for him. And then when he woke up, the ambulance is there to talk to him. So we're glad that he's, that he's okay. Uh, so we're, we're glad he's here tonight. Paul Lee has been uh, taken to Beth Shalom now. He's there. 
He's had some rough days the last three weeks. He's got a long way to go for rehab. But they are allowing uh, his, his, his two daughters, Katie, and they call his other daughter, Sis, they call her stay with him in, in, a, in rotations. But they're getting very weary. So pray for them, too. And the, the grandchildren are sitting in. I'm going to talk to Katie tomorrow and see if somehow the Lord, uh, if the facility will let some of us sit in with him for a while. Maybe we could help the family that way by giving the girls a break here and there. So we'll see how that will work, okay? And then uh, also, let's continue to pray for uh, our military men and women, those who are deployed, and uh, pray for our law enforcement officers and all that they're going through during this time. And uh, pray for our nation and the upheaval. It seems like you turn on one station, you'll hear this. You turn on another station, you hear this. Somewhere in between, there's got to be a, a balance uh, in good sense. Doing away with the police department is not good sense. Uh, that doesn't make sense to me at all, okay? It, 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 it's like the anarchists I told you about before in Ohio who didn't want to pay taxes. And so I asked them, what are you going to do when your house catches on fire? You can't call the fire department. And he says, well, that's my constitutional right to be protected. I said, then, it's, then you have to pay for it if we're going to have those services. And so it's amazing to hear some of the rhetoric that comes out of this, yet there needs to be uh, some notice in what's happening here. And let's be sure that we don't let one uh, policeman who made a, a, a call and went beyond uh, the reasonable things to do indict everybody. So let's remember that. Uh, for health needs, you want to pray for Cheryl Choka. She's still struggling at home with some issues with her uh, being able to go uh, to work and to therapy. Continue to pray for her. Grace Phillips is still in no uh, North Carolina. Yes. Okay. 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 Let's continue to pray for Grace. She's doing better. That's good, and go to the doctor. Uh, Trisha uh, Quisenberry, with this mass they found in her lungs with further tests uh, here in June. Let's pray for her. Craig Reynolds was here on Sunday. It was great to see him. We continue to pray for Craig. And, of course, Art as he recovers. Brantley Walker as he fell at home and is now uh, confused and having some issues of clarity in his thinking. And then Brother Gary's here tonight, but he uh, had a follow-up as well and has a follow-up with the doctor tomorrow. So we want to pray for, continue to pray for him uh, as well. So it's good to see all of you tonight. We're going to ask uh, Pastor Mike to come at this time. He's going to read our missionary letters for the evening and let you know what's going on with some of our missionaries. All right. Good to see you. I felt nervous tonight. It's been a long time, three months since I've been up here and uh, gained some weight during the corona thing. No, <laughs> I had to start going back to the gym. Pastors lost weight. And uh, got that goatee, he's looking all handsome and everything. I, I can't even get my coat button. And I went to button, I said, oh, my word. So that's why it's unbuttoned. It otherwise, it looks like a peacock when it gets mad spreading out back there. So I said, well, I'm not going to button my coat tonight. So, But I will read the missionary letter. So uh, good to see you this evening. We have a, a Baker's Bulletin from England. Miss Amanda says, praise the Lord for three years already serving in England as of May 29th. She loves what she does and encourages all of us to make sure that we're doing our part to further the gospel. We may not be on the foreign field, but we are all commanded to witness and be a witness. Patience and virtue um, is not easy to learn, she says. She isn't for sure where the phrase came from. She says, although there were early English writers that used this phrase in various writings, but she says we can go back even further to the scriptures and see many times where God told us to be patient. The Holy Spirit has helped her many times and taken her back to 2 Peter 1, 5 through 9. And we see patience is definitely a virtue and that we believers need to allow the Lord to cultivate in our lives as he builds our faith as believers. During the lockdown, she said it has been just plain hard learning patience, especially with some of the small things like waiting in lines to get into the grocery store or into the pharmacy. But she says one of the big areas of patience she's had to deal with during this time is waiting for the renewal of her visa. It was submitted on April 15th, and it usually takes around eight weeks, but because of the COVID, this is not the case. Her desire would be to have it in hand now, but she knows God's timing is best, and she will wait and gain faith and patience through this time. Please pray for her during this time as she waits. 
God called her there and will be faithful as always, and she waits as she waits, and his grace will lead her during this time of waiting as well. And she says, for, she quotes 1 Thessalonians 5.24. Some of her prayer requests are her visa, of course, wisdom in opening up church in the months ahead, wisdom in rescheduling events missed during the COVID time, Church members, uh, one of the church members is struggling from uh, chemo side effects and salvation of people that she comes in contact with regularly from the church and also individual meetings and continued prayer for ministering via video chats with the children, teens, and ladies from the church. And a few of her praises are as, as God's direction, for God's direction in her life and continued opportunities to spread the gospel during the pandemic and good health during this time as well. And that's uh, Miss Amanda Baker, Baker's Bulletin from May and June of 2020. And then our next letter is from the Barnetts in King Cove, Alaska. And this is um, this month in June 2020. Proverbs 2410 says, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. And the Barnetts over the last couple of months have had a few um, adversities as we read this letter. Um, rewind back to March. They went to March, to Anchorage in March. Um, for a normal shot that he needs for his eye for the um, uh, macular degeneration that he gets every 14 weeks. While well, while there, he went to a, another doctor's appointment, and he had a um, they had to remove a skin cancer from his scalp. So um, that was not planned, but they had it done while he was there in Anchorage. And he said they took some skin from his stomach to replace it there on his head. So he said, truly, he is now a fathead. So um, then... When they got ready to fly back to King Cove, that's when the coronavirus um, hit and Alaska shut down. So they had to wait there. Well, when, it got, when they got ready to go back, the airline they had flew on went bankrupt and had filed for Chapter 11. So 100 of the villages around that area now did not have um, access um, from this airline. So they had to wait to get another airline. So they finally got back home on April the 20th. So they were there about a month um, in Anchorage. King Cove has been shut down since March. They were able to have men's and ladies Bible studies on a limited basis up to Mother's Day. And then they opened back the church up with, of course, guideline, state guidelines. And just now have been able to start children's ministries again. Their building program continues to move on. And in February, their son-in-law, John, and another man were able to come from um, Soldanata Baptist and build the trusses. The city let them use a large building so they could work inside and build the trusses, which was a blessing. They were also able to bring Letha and Tiffany with them, and they celebrated Tiffany's 13th birthday with some of the girls there in the neighborhood. And Tiffany was able to meet and talk to one of the girls about Christ as well. I'm assuming that's probably their, um, maybe their granddaughters. Um, they, had, they had applied and met all requirements also for a grant for the Oldham Little Church Foundation, and they received $13,500 for the trusses, which enabled them to build those. They installed the trusses on May the 5th. The city let them use some of their equipment and cranes to do so, and 11 men were on site, church men and also men from the city, and the crane operator was a man from the city council. And you referred pastor um, you know, talk about King Cove many times because, um, of course, he likes that area. But um, as when they went up there and worked, you know, the city, because it's small, that the village they live in, of course, everybody, you know, gathers around and helps people. And that's one way that Brother Barnett's able to, you know, minister to people is because it is so small and they have such a great testimony there. So a man from the city council was actually running the crane to help put the trusses on the building. So that's a blessing. Then it says the FV Tempo C arrived, which is a boat, arrived at the beginning of June with some building materials, and this is all we needed to complete the exterior and interior building needs. All that is left to do now is the light fixtures, restroom fixtures, interior doors, and stall carpet, paint, and trim. Over 95,000 pounds of freight has been delivered by their craft fleet with no freight cost. What a blessing, and God, to God be the glory. As of now, they have spent 114,000 $58.38 on the building, and many have come to help with this endeavor and given money, including their home church, Calvary Baptist, in Ottoman, or Ottawa, Iowa, with a $20,000 gift. They are not at the end of the tunnel yet, but they're getting there. Their biggest hurdle was when a fire marshal chose not to accept their computerized design, architectural design, and made them get it done by a licensed architect engineer 
which cost them fourteen thousand dollars that was unplanned um, cash there. So, and we've you know um, you know fire marshals, people like that. Sometimes you run into things, but the drawing they had on the computer did not work, and so they spent fourteen thousand dollars there that they weren't planning. But he still um, gives God the glory. They're planning VBS in August, which is always a great outreach. So pray for them for the good weather and during the second week of August. Pray for the fishermen during this busy salmon season. Pray for the continual church direction and for funds to finish the church building. And also pray for the help as they work to reach their community. So that's the Barnett's this week and uh, Amanda Baker from England. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day, Lord, and many blessings you've given to us, Lord. We thank you for um, summertime arriving now and the, the heat outside, Lord. And we just um, thank you, Lord, for those that are cutting the grass and people that are cleaning the church again now, Lord, as we kind of start back um, getting things back to normal as we can. Uh, thank you, Lord, for um, Pastor being uh, ready all the time now and even during this time where we were um, taping and filming and things, Lord, that we were able to continue on, and we just thank you for that. Thank you for our liberty here in our country, Lord, and help us to utilize it, Lord, to our most. Uh, we pray for these requests that were uh, brought before you this evening, Lord. Continue to pray for Brother Paul Lee as he heals, Lord, and pray for his girls as they take care of him. Pray for Miss Grace, Lord. Good to hear that she's doing better, and thank you that she was able to uh, contact Dr. Beaver there. Continue to pray for Dr. Beaver, Lord, as he moves on in his life, Lord, and um, help him just to stay busy, Lord, and just thank you for his testimony. We thank you for um, the um, things that are happening now, even with the live streaming, that, Lord, as Brother Steve and uh, Brother Bruce are checking things out, Lord, and I pray that we'll be able to get that soon and um, continue that there. I pray for Brother Art, Lord, help him continue to heal up, and thank you that it wasn't um, any worse than it was, Lord, but just thank you that he's able to be here tonight, be with the dental work he has to have, Lord, and as he heals, Lord, just help it not to be uh, too painful there. I pray for um, the things that we have to do to get ready for school starting in August, Lord, and we know before we turn around, Lord, it'll be here, and I pray that um, the restrictions and things that the government has will be uh, lessened, Lord, and that we'll be able to um, start school normal, Lord, that would, be our, that would be our prayer, Lord, but no matter how we start, Lord, we just want to start with your honor and with your glory, and we want to be a shining light for our community, Lord, with Tabernacle Baptist Academy and Tabernacle Baptist Church, Lord. I pray for Amanda, Lord, keep her safe there, and as England opens back up and things there, Lord, I pray that you'll help her to continue to be able to uh, have these meetings on Zoom and FaceTime and things with uh, the teens and children and women there at the church, help her as she meets people in town, Lord, and um, just to be a good witness to them and open those opportunities for her there and be with the people that she works with there at her church. And pray, Lord, for the visa to come in soon, Lord, and ease her mind. And she prays for patience, Lord, that you'll help her faith, um, Lord, to be um, cultivated, Lord, and grow uh, through this. And I pray for the Barnett's, Lord, as they continue their building uh, project there. Help it to go well. Thank you for uh, just the, the, the beacon of light, Lord, that they are there in King Cove. And thank you that um, people from our church have been able to been up, go up there a few times, Lord, and help. And thank you for those that have given to this building uh, project. We pray for their VBS in August. That you have your hand upon it, Lord, as it touches the children, Lord, because we know that um, there, Lord, and as we saw many times, Lord, in the West Indies, people starting churches, and a lot of times kids would get saved and grow up in that church, and then they would take over the church, or they would bring their families to the, to the church, Lord. And I just pray for VBS to go well for them, be with their health as they continue to minister, Lord, and um, keep us all safe, Lord, with the COVID virus there, and as things uh, start to open back up more. And again, just be with us as we go through the rest of this evening. Be with Pastor Lord as he preaches. Give him the words he needs to say, Lord. And we love you and thank you and praise your name. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. All right. One more song. We're going to sing number 239, which is God Will Take Care of You. Would you stand with me, please? Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day.
take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Amen. You may be seated. Take our Bibles tonight and turn with me, please, to the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy, as we look at some passages tonight from the pastoral epistles. The pastoral epistles are those Pauline epistles that were written, directed to pastors of churches. 1 and 2 Timothy, two different pastors, two epistles to Timothy and one to Titus. These were men who were pastoring in different areas that Paul was writing to encourage them and tell them how the church of God should be run, how to handle different issues in the church of God. In these three books, you find on five occasions that Paul makes this kind of statement. He says that there are certain things that are a faithful saying, and on, a, and on four, or three of the five occasions, he uses the word faithful saying, and then he says, and worthy of all acceptation. And when you examine that phrase and look at it, it comes from two words, a faithful saying, a true and honest, a reliable, a faithful word. It's the word logos, a faithful saying. This is something that is worthy and is honest and truthful. Then the, then the, uh, the uh, word studies of the worthy of all acceptation, that phrase, the word worthy means it's of great weight. It's of great honor. It's of great uh, virtue. And so these things are weighty matters that are worthy of all acceptation. That means a, uh, a reception or admission. These things are of great weight that are, that are worth listening to. I remember a dear man who was in our church in Dayton. His name was Earl Woody. Earl Woody was a tanker in World War II. Uh, he was in Germany. He told a wonderful story. I, he, he said it. He gave it many times in testimony. He spoke of the fact that he was in his tank and they had stopped on a road and uh, they were in uh, pressing toward Germany at the end of the Second World War. And he said he was uh, in, in his tank and they decided to go up top and to sit out and eat some of the rations. And there he was cracking open his, uh, his rations and he uh, happened to look up and staring right at him with gun barrels looking at him some 40 yards away was a, a German machine gun nest. And the, and the, the gun, uh, the machine gun was, was right on him. And he, he laid his rations down, looking at that person, eyeball to eyeball through the end of that gun, slipped down into his tank, into the turret, pulled down the top, and he said, he said to himself, that man spared my life, so I will spare his. And he turned and drove his tank away. He told that story, and then he began to weep and say, Pastor, if that man would have killed me, I'd have gone to hell. I was not a Christian. I was not saved. And when Earl Woody would speak of those kinds of things as a World War II veteran, he's now with the Lord, you would listen. And uh, him and his wife, Dorothy, were members of our church from the very beginning when we, when we arrived there. He could be comical sometimes, but, you know, with the years that he had in his 70s and his background and a World War II veteran, we thought, you know, you better listen to him. So there was a young man who was getting ready to get married in our church, and he set him down at a reception we had for them or whatever, and he says, young man, I have some advice for you. <laughs> he says, sit down here a minute. He says, I'm going to tell you 
what has been the success to my marriage with Miss Dorothy Woody for all for Mrs. Dorothy Woody for all of these years? And of course, the man who 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 loved Earl began to look at him with wide eyes, and he said, "Now, you know, son, when she asked you to to paint her favorite color in that room, when she asked you to fix that 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 that." picture that's crooked when she asked you to take out the trash when she asked you to plant the flowers and he went on a bunch of stuff and the guys just each one yeah 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 when she asked you to do that he said don't he said what he said don't even think about not doing it just do it if you were there you'd have laughed your sides off like I did he was pulling the guy's leg and trying to tell him, do what your sweet, wife, your sweet wife needs and help her. But we were listening to that because it was from Earl. He was saying, he, w- he would start by saying, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. So listen to me, son. I want you to know tonight that these five things that Paul told to these pastors are very weighty even for us. You say, well, pastor, it should be for you, but no, it's for all people. The pastoral epistles have recommendations to these pastors, and, but it's teaching them how the people of God ought to operate within their church. So would you look at them with me? Let's look at 1 Timothy, first of all, chapter 1, and beginning read, uh, reading with me, please, uh, chapter 1 and verse 12. Paul writes, I thank, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord Jesus, uh, the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. And then he gives this statement. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world. First of all, he talked about God's gift. This is worthy to listen to. God's gift is so sweet and so important. Christ Jesus came, came into the world to save sinners. That was God's plan. God's gift was his son was sent. God's plan was that he would save sinners from their sin and, 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 and save the world to, uh, uh, came, uh, came to the world to save sinners. But then he talks about God's object, which was him. To save sinners, he says, of whom I am what? Chief. A couple of times Paul referred to himself as being the chiefest of sinners. Now you say, well, what in the world? Why, Why is that? You know, Paul can say, I am the greatest of sinners. But please, we sometimes, not reading context and verses to follow, we stop somewhere and we lose the blessing. Look at the next verse. How be it, for this cause I obtain mercy. Even though I'm chiefest, chiefest of sinners, how be it, for this cause, there was a purpose in all of that. It, it was not only God's gift and God's plan and God's object, but God had a purpose. What was it? That in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. That's that word for patience, the long suffering with an individual. For a pattern, that means a type to them, an example to them, which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. In other words, if God could save a wicked, injurious, persecutor, murderer of Christians, I became an example of the grace of God being the chiefest of sinners that killed the people of God. Then God can use me as an example to announce to others, this is a worthy of acceptation, faithful saying that we ought to listen to. Now, why do I say that? Because you and I all are a story. God saved you in spite of what you might have done. God saved me in spite of what I might have said or thought or wanted to accomplish in my own selfish way. We are walking patterns of God's long suffering to us and everything that he did for us. You say, well, wait a minute, I grew up in a Christian home and I never got involved in lots of things. But let me tell you something, your wicked thoughts are just as wicked as Paul the persecutor, right? Saul the persecutor. 
Your selfishness is no different than the selfishness of anyone else. We all are wicked sinners. Here's the problem sometimes with us, is that we kind of sugarcoat how bad we really are. And then we realize that it's such a faithful saying and worthy for everyone to look at it look at it as a weighty matter that God would save wicked people like us. You say, well, I don't do this and I don't do that. But you think you are so good or we think we are so good that we think all of our right doing is going to impress God when he says all our righteousnesses are as filthy what? Rags. And the only thing we do or teach or preach or pray or love or do is only by God's grace. So we are examples of the pattern of God's long suffering that we will be saved. Hey, that, that's concerning life salvation that ought to be a weighty matter for us to think about often. And we sometimes, I have to admit, I get so busy in doing a lot of things that seem to be right that I forget sometimes to say, oh, God. I could have perished. I could have been in a home that Jesus didn't come to. And, and, and then your grace may, is still able to come to me and save me. But, dear God, you spoke to my dad's heart. You spoke to my mom's heart. We saw a change. My sister and I got saved. When I think about my, about my own life, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation concerning life salvation. That's number one. Paul gives another faithful saying. Look with me in chapter 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Same word translated for us with a different, same Greek word translated for the different English word. Chapter 3, verse 1, when he starts talking about the pastor and what the, who the, and, and, uh, what the pastor, uh, what the qualifications for a pastor are. This is a true saying, same word, faithful. This is a faithful, true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. This is about life service. If this faithful saying was about life salvation, this is about life service. And think about it for a moment. That, that when we desire something, the, the word desire means to stretch out oneself, to reach or grasp out for. It's stretching ourselves. It's, like the, it's not the same word, but it's like the word to press toward the mark, to reach out toward the mark. Those who desire to do that in service were reaching out for the things of God. That's a, that's a good thing, and it's a faithful saying. Let me ask you, all of us as we serve God, whether you are a pastor or you're a deacon, you're a Sunday school teacher, you are an usher, you're a church member, you're a grass cutter, you're a, a, a door opener, whatever you are, are we understand that it is a true weighty saying that we have the opportunity to serve God? You know, one of the saddest things in life, and I, it's just a fact, and it's, it's sad. How many of you here tonight, and probably most of you, because most of you tonight have been here, how many of you here tonight have spent some time, more than five minutes, sitting at some time in your life and talking to Paul Lee? Raise your hand. Okay, several of you have done that here. About half, all right? Here's the saddest thing. Here is a man, here is a person that now will be in Beth Shalom and, and probably, maybe not, but most likely the rest of his days. And he will need to have assistance to live the rest of his days on this earth. And he is one of the most genuine, kind, loving, funny, enjoyable people. Those of you who spent that, am I not describing him right? He is a, he, it, he, he speaks with the brogue of a Virginian aristocrat. You listen to him talk. There's different inflections he has. I love to hear him talk. And he's always uh, talking about how ugly I am or I'm uglier than him or whatever. He's always that man served us in this church by being a counter and counting the money, him and Frankie, Frankie uh, Williams and others for years and years and years and years and years. And many of you, because of his health, did not have the opportunity to get to know him. The saddest thing in life is when those dear brethren pass off the scene. Many of you hear us talk about them, but you never get to experience what it means to see a faithful, steady servant of the Lord. 
See, Brother Paul, even in his latter years, before he got into the condition he's in now, every day fixed or took dinner to his wife, Doris, who, who has dementia in Beth Shalom, every day of his life. And he always referred to her lovingly. It's not disrespect. The Lee woman. That's who he called Doris, his wife. Got to go see the Lee woman. I'm on my way. Many times there would be, there would be packages of tomatoes hung on my front door while Paul Lee was on his way to Beth Shalom to see his wife. And he'd stop by and wouldn't, wouldn't ring the doorbell. He'd just leave, leave tomatoes. And we'd always say, Paul's been here. Here is a man who served. Here's what my point is here. If this is a faithful saying, we need to enjoy the time we have with each other as we have it here together. I, I, I saw when people like a uh, Leroy and Nora Pace that some of you have never met, they were for many years Mr. and Mrs. Tabernacle and did everything and served every, in every way. Uh, I, I, uh, I think of John and Alice Wells, faithful all the time, lived 30-some miles away and drove to church and stayed here on during the day at the Phelps and went, you think of these people. Those of us who got to m work with them, meet them, John and Alice, still live in North Carolina. They come up sometime. This is, uh, this is Kevin's mom and dad. But they were faithful. And it's worthy of all acceptation. It's a faithful saying that when we desire to serve the Lord in a local church, whether pastor or whatever, it is a privilege to get to know those type of people as they serve. Sad things happen when either they go to heaven and we don't get to see them anymore or they move to some other locale and we lose contact. And I, I, I pray that we'd say to ourselves, this preciousness of this church body that we have understood in the absence of it and trying to stay connected and the fact that even now we're talking and we're trying to speak to each other from afar, but it is a wonderful design of God for us to love each other and to learn how service is so important to serve the Lord Jesus. We need to be careful in this time of drawing away from church because of our isolation and social distancing that we don't forget to appreciate the privilege we have in serving in such a ministry. So it's a faithful saying to be one of God's servants. Concerning our salvation, concerning our service, thirdly, if you turn with me, please, look at another passage here. Let's look at it with me. It's in 1 Timothy 4, verses 9 and 10. And this has to do with life's sufferings. And notice what Paul says now. He's writing to this young man, this young preacher, trying to encourage him. He says earlier in the passage, verse 7, but refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Here he goes now. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and what? Suffer. Reproach. Because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Please understand how the construction of that verse is. We, we both labor and suffer. Okay. Laboring and suffering. Why? Because we trust, we have a living, we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men. When you are laboring, you do it because you trust in the living God. And when you are suffering, you do it because you trust in the living God. And our life is based upon our trust, our hope that's expressed in the living God. And so laboring in our weariness, and that means labor to weariness, our trusting, uh, having hope in God to the very end, we do it because we trust in the living God. 
Paul says, this is a worthy thing to listen to, young Timothy. When you, are, when you are laboring and when you're to the point of exhaustion, don't forget the reason you do it, because you trust in the living God. And when you are suffering, whether going through whatever God has allowed for you to go through in your life, whether it be Paul Lee and his recovery from double hip, re, hip surgery, or whether it be a, a, a fall that Gary's gone through or the fall that Art had, we have to suffer whatever because we trust in the living who? Living God. And that living God in verse 10 is the Savior of all men, especially of them that believe. He is your deliverance, your Savior, what that word means, in all things. I want to say that's a pretty weighty statement and very worthy of all acceptation. Number four, not only for life's salvation and life's service and life's suffering, but I want you to notice with me, Life sanctification. Let's look at Titus chapter 3. Over to the other young man that was written to, Titus 3 and verse 8. What does the Bible say? Paul uses the same word. Same statement. This is a faithful saying, verse 8. And these things I will that I'll affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works these things are good and profitable unto men. He says, Titus, when you are teaching, when you are preaching, when you are laboring, it's good to affirm, to repeat, repetition, to drive home certain things. I'm always concerned sometimes when a pastor announces his text. Oh, I've heard that before. And how as a preacher, I understand that when you preach on a very commonly known text, You've got to draw people in because they say, I know this passage. What else is there to say? God always has a message that can say different, have different applications, one interpretation, but many applications from a passage. But as you understand that and see that, that God wants us to affirm constantly, here he goes again pushing that missions. Here he goes again starting a new building project. Here he goes again a new thing. You say, why? To affirm constantly. Paul writes to him, that they which have believed in God might be careful, the purpose is to maintain good what? Good works. Five times in the book of, of uh, Titus, you find this idea of maintaining good works, to be sure we're doing what God would have us do. And my job often for you is to implore and encourage you, don't give up. Maintain the good works. God will honor that in the end. Number five, quickly. Not only was it life salvation, a faithful saying, and worthy of all accept, uh, acceptation for life service and life suffering and life sanctification, that we ought to be going on to these uh, maintaining good works as we grow. But turn back now with me, please, to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and I want you to notice verse 11. Here's our phrase again. Paul writes, it's a faithful, it's a true, it's a worthy saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live unto him, or live with him. It reminds me of the verse in Galatians 2.20. For me to live is Christ. To die is what? Gain. Do you understand if you turn back to Galatians 2.20 and look at that with me a moment? Because sometimes when we read the scripture and you think about the, the importance of the passage. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not Christ, but uh, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I am crucified. I am put to death. The picture is that that we see in Romans 12. Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living what? Sacrifices normally are dead. They aren't living. The picture here is that for us, if you will, to lay upon the altar and to bind our hands and our feet and to let ourself and our own selfish pride and everything that we do let that be set aside. 
let that be crucified, let that be put to death. And then we get up off of that altar and we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice for God. Verse 2 says in chapter Romans chapter 12, it says that we ought to do that which is a living sacrifice acceptable unto God which, are, which is our reasonable service and stop being conformed to the world but be ye transformed the, by the renewing of your mind. God wants our thinking to be that which is Christ. For me to live is Christ, is Jesus, is what he would do and not me. That's a pretty faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that we would give ourselves to that kind of truth. Five times to these two preachers and that they would tell the people in the house of God how they ought to behave themselves, we find that he says this is a faithful saying. I trust you'll take these, this, this, this last one on life's secret. What is life's secret? If I'm going to be happy for me to live, it's not me. It's Christ. I, if I live, I live to him. If I die, I die in him. It's amazing when you think about that because the, the writer to the, to the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon, talked about, how all was vanity, everything, and then the last chapter. Remember what he said? Turn over and look at it with me. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. In your, in your Old Testament, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Look at what it says in chapter 12 in the book of Ecclesiastes. All has been vanity. All is wasteful. All is useless. He says, I've seen everything under the sun. And then the writer ends the book with these two verses. Chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. That's a pretty weighty saying, right? That's a pretty um, worthy, uh, faithful saying to receive. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Number one, fear God. Well, that's pretty clear and a faithful saying. Secondly, and keep his commandments. First is the fear of God, the proper attitude. Second is a fruitful response, the proper actions. Obey, obey his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. And finally, in verse 14, for God shall bring every work into judgment. Wow. Pretty weighty saying. Fear God. Obey God. Understand we're going to be judged by God for the work that we've done at the beam of seat of Christ for, for, for us as believers, at the great right throne judgment for anyone who's not saved. So if we look at that as here's the whole conclusion, the whole matter, Earl would do that for every young man, not only the one young man I spoke of, he'd take him aside. When your wife asks you to do this, don't do it. When she asks you to do this, don't do it. And he says, don't you even think about not doing it. And we'd all laugh. But tonight, can I encourage you with something? Don't even think about not receiving God's faithful sayings that are worthy of all acceptation to maintain the good works in life sanctification. To understand salvation is so precious. It's a faithful saying that we're the chiefest of sinners, but God makes an example of us for life's service, for life's secret, for me to live as Christ. All of these things are so important to us. Don't ever just say, that's not a big deal. For you who are here on Wednesday night, you know it's a big deal. May God help us not to forget. Let's have a word of prayer. We're going to be dismissed in prayer. We'll all dismiss together. We're of a comfortable number tonight to do that. So let's stand to our feet, be dismissed in prayer.